Ukraine war update uh, for December 18th. Here we go. Most of the fighting is being conducted over the past 24 hours, 48 hours in uh, around the city uh, called Kupiansk. It's in the north. Um, of course, there's a lot of fighting in Avdivka that hasn't changed. The pressure is still on there, like I talked about yesterday. But in Kupiansk, well, more uh, accurate uh, place called Sinkivka, I hope I'm saying this correct. Um, the Russians have been attacking quite heavily, uh, just with the same tactics as they've been doing in, in Avdivka. They're sending like do these dozens of armored fighting vehicles and tanks and, you know, like these giant columns. And uh, to try to establish a foothold in this settlement called Sinkivka, but they are uh, experiencing catastrophic losses up to and above 50 no above 50 percent casualty rate the russian tactics are horrendous and uh horrible but you know it they just keep on it, it seems to be working so they're going to keep going um they've been sending these uh waves like they've been doing in avdivka with people and armored vehicles and everything like burning to crisps um and it was interesting to see, if you see this video here, they started sending in just dismounted troops, stopped sending like vehicles to protect them uh, because probably they think the vehicles are more valuable than the actual human beings. So they are sending like these waves of humans into the area and uh, trying to establish a foothold. And here is a video of the Ukrainians literally driving over a building uh, with the Russian inside. Here you can see a fuel depot on fire uh, in the city of Donetsk. The Ukrainians have been conducting airstrikes in Donetsk, which lies next to Avdivka, uh, to try to disrupt the intensity of the fighting. They've been hitting like logistic hubs and command centers and uh, stuff like that to try to disrupt it, but it doesn't seem to be working. In the south, eastern side of Avdivka, the Russians have been continuing their attacks along with the other two axes from the north and the south uh, 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 by the city. Uh, in the southeast is the industrial zone. The Russians have been able to cross it, uh, but the Ukrainians have been holding on uh, to their defensive positions, and the Russians uh, over the past 24 hours experienced Again, catastrophic losses. So this is the number two catastrophic uh, today in today's update. In Kherson, on the left bank of the Dnipro River, in the settlement called Krinki, the fighting is uh, very intense in the forests around uh, the settlement. Uh, the Ukrainians are able to kill a bunch of Russians there. It's, uh, it's pretty much the same description as the other two settlements, but with a twist. Uh, the description reads a colossal losses this time. So we have two catastrophics and one colossal. So <laughs> that's uh, interesting. It's, it's very interesting because they don't have huge amounts of troops there. I mean, like for a few hundred, them, but like, you know, um, the Russian military in Ukraine is 470,000 troops. So for Ukrainians, a few hundred to be able to hold on to that uh, bridgehead, it's it's pretty impressive, I think. I talked about in a video uh, a couple of days ago uh, that uh, the and I was worried that we we're going to have a general mobilization after New Year's. You know, I just look at the clouds in the, on the horizon, you know, it. it it's pretty dark out there, you know. The situation is pretty bleak. Yesterday, uh, Kirill Budanov, which is the head of GUR, GUR, which is the military intelligence here in Ukraine, he was talking about that uh, I was right. He didn't mention me specifically, but, you know, I was right in, in assuming this. And he said, and I, let me read the quote, it's not even conceivable to think that we can do this with, meaning victory, do it without mobilization. So that's that. What that means in the end, I don't know. Um, but they need to do something. And Europe and America uh, being the way they are, now they've made it perfectly clear that they're going to have to have Ukrainians finish the job. 
um, with or without their support. And I'm 100% sure that the Ukrainians will never surrender. You know, they will never, they just know. Or it's, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not a fortune teller, but I don't see, I don't see it in the cards. It's very unlikely. Uh, it's my belief that the Ukrainians will fight until their last breath in this war. Because it's an existential war, you know, existential, ex like is their existence is being threatened. I mean, wouldn't you, like if you would be invaded by not only uh, an enemy, but a horrible enemy that rapes and kills children. So, I mean, yeah. Anyway, see you tomorrow.